let's go down. Ah, great. So, I mean, the um, beside the patient, uh, what equipment do you need to do an endometrial biopsy? Um, I've got a lot of, of equipment on here, uh, and not everybody may use uh, it all, but obviously there's the inevitable uh, gloves, speculum, uh, sterile gel, uh, sponge forceps, swabs, a single tooth tenaculum, saline, gallipot, pipel, pot to put the sample in, and a good light source. So, I'm kind of, sort of you know, saying the obvious here, uh, but it's good to have everything ready um, just in case you need it. As I say, you may not need or may not use everything, um, but it's good to have uh, uh, everything ready and prepared. It's also good to familiarize yourself, I think, with the Papel. Um, obviously, if you've never used one before, it's good to have a look, uh, take one out, uh, have, a, have a look at it. And, and it's a suction curette which takes the sample and you're going to kind of create a vacuum uh, in that papel by putting back on the inner stylet. But you can see on this diagram, there's a small hole at the top through which the endometrium will be sucked. And the papel itself is graded um, and it's graded in centimeters so that you know the depth of marking so you know how deep in the cavity uh, you are and the markings are also good because you're going to pull back on that inner stylet uh, to about sort of the seven or eight mark that's recommended to gain a good uh, endometrial sample. Again, you know, uh, uh, most uh, reproductive medicine specialists, of course, have done lots of embryo transfers. Uh, so the the doing an endometrial papel is a pretty straightforward, uh, easy procedure to do, and you, you can either do this in a, an outpatient uh, office type environment, or of course, if you're in an IVF clinic, you can do this um, in the theatre environment as well. Uh, whatever you need to, of course, place the uh, place the patient in the lithotomy position. Um, insert the speculum and you need to get a really good view of the cervix to do that before you start the procedure. So really get yourself a good view, good light source um, to do this. Again, you can do this by yourself. You can have an assistant with you. Um, I, I usually very gently clean over the cervix with some saline using the sponge forceps and the gauze. This is not a, this is not a, a really good clean. This is just a wipe over the cervix very gently. Um, I always, in fact, place the tenaculum on the cervix. Again, this is optional and uh, it depends on what you're comfortable with doing. But for me, although it's a little bit uncomfortable for the patient, it does allow me to um, sort of hold on to the uterus. And I find it, I can uh, insert the propel much easier. I know exactly where I am in the cavity um, and uh, it allows me to do the whole procedure uh, more efficiently. But again, some people prefer not, uh, and you can of course perform that biopsy uh, without the need to place the tenaculum on, but I do find it, it aids the process. Um, I then, uh, once I've done that, I'll insert the papel to usually to the depth of the cavity or at least six centimeters on the papel. Again, those people who are reproductive medicine specialists find this should find this really easy. We're used to putting catheters in the uterine cavity. We're used to measuring the depth of that uterine cavity. So I put it in. I pull back on the uh, inner stylet uh, to create that suction. And then what I do is I pull the whole papel backwards towards the cervix. I rotate it 90 degrees. I push it back in. I put it back out again and I repeat that. So I've got a total of, if you like, four times I'm doing that. And it's a very, very quick process. It's speedy in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Um, and I have said that I always get a good sample uh, doing it that way. Um, I've just put this in uh, because these are sort of some of the issues that I have found doing this. Um, for most cases, particularly for fertility patients, um, it's not difficult to get in. Uh, patients are often having this for 
uh, recurrent implantation failure and any real difficulty has already been identified uh, when doing embryo transfers to get into the cavity. Um, but there is no memory associated with the papel, um, which means that if you try and bend the end to curve round, um, it will curve a little, uh, but not a great deal. Um, in those cases where I can't get into the cavity, um, I will use a plastic sound. Um, these do have some memory and they are really useful for locating the way in, into the cavity. And of course, you can always uh, measure the depth of the cavity uh, with that. Uh, some people I know may use a sound from the beginning um, just to identify the depth of the uterine cavity, but I don't think that's essential. Um, the most important thing is not to force the papel in. You've got to use a degree of pushing, if you like, uh, but slightly not to force uh, the papel in. Um, and you can do the biopsy in most cases. I put more than 95% here, but I think for, for mostly for fertility patients, I, I think I've, I've only not been able to get into the cavity uh, on one occasion. And, I, and I've done hundreds and hundreds of these. The, this, it's, a, it's a very low risk procedure uh, for sure. Um, the risk, I suppose, greatest risk is just not getting in. Um, but you don't need prophylactic antibiotics. They're not recommended. They're not recommended by the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists for doing endometrial biopsy. There is an extremely low risk of perforation. This is not a forced procedure. This is a fairly gentle procedure, even though the patient might not feel it's gentle. Um, and you rarely will get any bleeding. The only time I ever get bleeding, of course, is the tenaculum can sometimes cause bleeding at the site I've placed it on the, on the anterior lipid cervix. But the procedure is uncomfortable, um, particularly nulliparous women. Uh, I find that in those women who've had a baby, actually, they tolerate the procedure unbelievably well and, and it's associated with very little discomfort. Uh, but those women who are nulliparous uh, do get period-like cramps during the procedure and after. It's most painful during the um, procedure, uh, but it settles extremely quickly. Um, and I've never not been able to do a biopsy because it's too uncomfortable. And I think speed is of the essence when doing this type of procedure. Uh, and the quicker you can get that biopsy done, uh, the less uncomfortable uh, it is overall for, for the patient. 